Welcome to this new tutorial offered to you by LearnElectronics.org. In this tutorial you will learn how to design and simulate a homodyne receiver using System View. Start System View and create a new project. Click on the schematic icon in the workspace tree to edit the schematic's name. For example, call the new schematic receiver by default. System View creates a data flow analysis in the workspace tree. Since we are going to design an RF system we need to perform an RF system analysis. Thus the data flow analysis is unnecessary and can be deleted from the workspace. Go to the RF design library, look for the components of your design using the filter box, and drag and drop them in the schematic sheet. Drag and drop the multisource model symbol into the schematic sheet. Drag the Chebyshev bandpass filter and drop it in the schematic sheet. Then, connect it to the input source. Drag the RF amplifier then drop it in the schematic sheet. Connect the RF amplifier with the bandpass filter output. The input RF signal is very weak, so the necessary amplification can be provided by adding another RF amplifier in the receiver chain. Connect the new RF amplifier with the output of the previous amplification stage. Drop in the schematic a splitter to deliver the RF signal to the in-phase and quadrature branches of the receiver. Connect the output of the RF amplifier with the splitter. Now we can implement the two branches of the quadrature receiver that perform the conversion to baseband of the in-phase and the quadrature components of the RF signal. Add to the schematic the down converter mixer for the in-phase channel. Connect the splitter output to the mixer RF port. Repeat the same operations for the mixer of the quadrature channel. Add to the schematic a 90 degree splitter to generate the in phase and quadrature tones for signal damp conversion. Mirror the splitter along the y axis using the mirror button in the top menu. Connect the splitter outputs to the ELO ports of the mixers. Add to the schematic a Chebyshev Lopez filter for each channel. These filters are necessary to suppress the high frequencies components of the mixer's outputs. Connect the filter to the IF port of the down conversion mixers. Repeat the same operations for the quadrature channel.
add an RF amplifier for each channel of the receiver. This amplifier is usually necessary to adapt the dynamic of the baseband signal to the dynamic input range of the analog to digital converters that interface the analog part of the transceiver with the digital backend that performs signal detection. Connect the input of the RF amplifier with the output of the Lopez filter in the in-phase channel. Repeat the same operations for the quadrature channel. Drag and drop in the schematic a power oscillator to perform the baseband conversion and connect it to the input of the splitter. Mirror the oscillator along the Y axis using the mirror button in the top menu. Then connect the oscillator to the splitter input. Complete the schematic adding the output ports to terminate both the in-phase and the quadrature branches of the receiver. Click on the multisource symbol to open the properties window and start defining the characteristics of the input signal. The input tone is a wideband signal with a 10 MHz bandwidth, a 2450 MHz center frequency and a minus 90 dB in power. Click OK to close the edit source window. Click OK to close the properties window. Then start editing the properties of the Cherbyshev bandpass. Click on the bandpass filter to open the properties window. The filter is a 7th order bandpass filter with Cherbyshev response, in band ripple of 0.1 dB, a lower frequency of 2400 MHz, an upper frequency of 2500 MHz, and a 2.2 dB insertion loss. Click OK to close the properties window. Click on the first RF amplifier to open the properties window. Set the gain of the amplifier to 14.5 dB and the noise figure to 0.7 dB. Leave all the other parameters unchanged. Click OK to close the properties window. Click on the second RF amplifier to edit its properties. Set the gain to 23 dB and the noise figure to 1.7 dB. Leave all other parameters unchanged. Click OK to close the properties window. Click on the mixer of the in-phase branch of the receiver to edit its properties. Set the conversion gain of the mixer to minus 9 dB, the LO drive level to 13 dBm, and the noise figure to 9 dB. Click OK to close the properties window. Click on the mixer of the quadrature branch of the receiver to edit its properties. Configure the device with the same parameter values of the mixer in the in-phase branch.
Click OK to close the properties window. Click on the Lopez filter symbol in the in-phase branch to edit its properties. Set the cutoff frequency of the filter to 5 MHz and the insertion loss to 1 dB. Click OK to close the properties window. Click on the Lopez filter symbol in the quadrature branch of the receiver to edit its properties. Set for this device, the same properties of the Lopez filter of the in-phase branch. Click OK to close the properties window. Click on the RF baseband amplifier in the in-phase branch of the receiver to edit its properties. Set the gain of the amplifier to 25 dB and the noise figure to 2.5 dB. Set also the output referred 1 dB compression point to 16 dBm and the output saturation power to 20 dBm. Make the properties visible on the schematic by checking the checkbox in the show column of the properties window. Click OK to close the properties window. Click on the RF baseband amplifier of the quadrature branch to edit its properties. Set for this device the same properties of the baseband amplifier in the in phase chain. Click OK to close the properties window. Add a new RF analysis to the workspace tree. Add a new RF analysis to the workspace tree. Set the channel width to 10 MHz. Click on the Paths tab to edit the paths that have to be analyzed. Add a new path. We want to analyze the paths from the multisource input to output ports 3 and 4 respectively. Repeat the same operations for the path that goes from multisource input to output port 4. Click Accept to close the simulation parameters window. Add a new folder called Graphs to the workspace tree to store all the simulation results. Before running the analysis, don't forget to edit the properties of the power oscillator. Click on the schematic symbol of the oscillator to open the properties window. Set the oscillation frequency to 2450 MHz and the output power to 16 dBm. Then click OK to close the properties window. Click the play button to run all the analyses. Add a new graph to the project. In the type of series box, select spectrum as the type of graph to be plotted. In the data box select the receiver data sampled on both paths from multisource input to the output ports of the receiver. Check P3 to plot the output power measured on net 3, namely, the output port 3 of the receiver. Then click OK to close the graph series wizard. In the Graph Properties window you can edit all the properties of the graph you want to plot. This includes the type of graph, the scales of the X and Y axis and the name and title of the graph. Give a name and a title to the graph. Uncheck the X axis auto scale and set to 20 MHz the maximum frequency to display on the graph. Set the maximum frequency to display to 10 MHz. 
Then click OK to close the graph properties window. Click on the graph to plot the values of the output spectrum for a given frequency. Add a new graph to the project. This time select level diagram in the type of series box. Choose the rest of your data sampled on the path 1, namely the signal path from the multisource input to the output port 3 in the in-phase branch of the receiver. Check CGAIN to plot the cascaded gain of the receiver. Click OK to close the graph series wizard. Choose a name and a title for your graph. Then click OK to close the graph properties window. The graph displays the gain at each stage of the receiver chain from input to output. Now, add once again a new graph to the project. Select once again level diagram in the type of series box. Select the signal path from the multisource input to output port 3. Check C and D R to plot the carrier to noise and distortion ratio. Click OK to close the graph series wizard. The name and a title for your graph. Click OK to close the graph properties window. Measurement represents the ratio of the desired channel power to channel noise and distortion power along the path that goes from the multisource input to the output port 3. The desired channel power is the total integrated power in the main channel along the specified path. This measurement includes only the desired signal. The noise and distortion channel power is the sum of the channel noise power, the total intermodulation channel power, and the phase noise channel power. Add a new graph to the project. Select once again level diagram in the type of series box. Select the path from the multisource input to the output port 3. Then check CNF to measure the cascaded noise figure of the selected path. Click OK to close the graph series wizard. The name and a title for your graph. Click OK to close the graph properties window. This measurement represents the cascaded noise figure in the main channel along the path from the multisource input to the output port 3. Thank you for watching. Bookmark www.learnelectronics.org in your browser and check the website periodically for new free material. Don't forget to follow Learn Electronics and the social networks. Please support Learn Electronics with a donation, a Facebook like, a plus one on Google Plus, or a tweet to your friend.